Now, your first look at high school football scores and highlights from across the valley with Mo Carter and Hannah Alavito. This is First Down Friday Night on WZDX, sponsored by Northeast Alabama Community College and Bojangles Chicken and Biscuits. Thanks for joining us on another episode of First Down Friday Night. With the playoffs only weeks away, some schools are still sitting pretty while others are fighting for their postseason lives. Absolutely. You see it year in and year out. One team that's sitting pretty right now is May Jemison. Last week, Kelvis Weiss team took over first place in the region with a cumber behind win at Brooks. This week, they faced another stiff foe in Lee in the battle for the Rocket City. And of course, it's the ETV game of the week. Players from both sides have known each other for years. We'll pick things up early on, and of course, it is Mae Jemison getting on the board thanks to this guy. It's Harry Crump. And even though he doesn't get crumped because of this touchdown right here, he does put his team on top. Six to nothing. And then here comes Francisco Amora on for the extra point. He's rocking number 40. And eventually they are going to snap it. There's the kick. It goes up and it is good. Seven to nothing. Jaguars on top. Let's fast forward to the third quarter. Now it's 10 to nothing. May Jemison on the prolic win. Shed Hobbs takes the hand off up the gut and he finds pay dirt. The May Jemison Jaguars are starting to run away with this. It's 16 to nothing as Coach Tony looks on. But not to be outdone, Noah Watkins finds Chris Reed for a touchdown. So they're on the board. Two point conversion was no good. But in the end, it's those Jaguars from May Jemison who hold on and win 16 to 6, solidifying their first place in that region. Next week, May Jemison will take on Ardmore, while Lee will take on Lawrence County. Let's stay in that region, everyone. East Limestone head coach Jeff Pugh won his 100th game last week tonight. They went for 101 against St. John Paul. Already up 21 to nothing. The Indians add to it when Zach Crosby scores a short touchdown. 28 to nothing Indians. But here come the Falcons right before the half. Seth Brown rolling around and finds his man. It's Gerard McCarron. He breaks a tackle and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. 28 to 7 Indians still on top. But Hannah, these are some very dangerous words. Ensuing kickoff. Huh. Dominique White <laughs> takes the kick right here. Actually, they kind of squib kicked it to him or whatever. Watch him just dodge off to the finish, shake off a few tacklers, and number 24 is gone. It's the return on the kickoff right there. That made it 35 to 7 at that point. Last up there, we got East Limestones on top, 49 to 7 late in the fourth quarter. Looks like the Indians are going to get another victory. Next week, the Indians will take on Russellville, while St. John Paul has to take on Brooks. The Austin Black Bears are undefeated and tied at the top of 6A Region 8 standings with Marshall Shoals. Now those two teams square off next week, but tonight the Black Bears face Hartzell. The Tigers are in a three-way tie in Region 8 for third, but just like every team Austin has played this year, they will have a tough time slowing down the Black Bears offense that has outscored region opponents 196 to 33. But in the first quarter, I know it is crazy. Hartzell, though, is able to slow them down a little bit, getting the stop there, taking down Ace of Martin. They couldn't do anything with the ball when they got it back, though. Now late in the first, the Black Bears on the move. Paxton Montgomery's pass is caught by Jackson Landers. He picks up a bunch of yards before being taken down a few plays later. Austin is going for it on fourth down, and this time Martin is able to pick it up the first down just before the second. They head to the other end, and Martin keeps it and muscles his way across the goal line for the touchdown. Austin goes up 7-0. Let's go to the final. Austin goes on to win 28-6. Next week, Hartzell will play at Decatur, and Austin will travel to Muscle Shoals. Man, Asa Martin's on pace to get like 60 touchdowns this year because it seems like he's scoring two, three each and every week. Every week, he's racking them up. All right, Muscle Shoals is taking on Hazel Green tonight. Now, Muscle Shoals is set up for one of those top two seeds right now, but they got to keep winning. In the first quarter, both teams struggle to move the ball. Besides on this play, Stephon Davis takes the handoff and is able to shed a few tackles. But Muscle Shoals fails to capitalize on the, this drive to the second. Now, Hazel Green is going for it here on fourth down. But the pass to Jordan Seymour is dropped. The Trojans look for a pass interference call, and head coach Will Wagadon is not happy with the no call he really there. Is not happy. 
Muzzle Shoals would get the ball back and give it straight to Davis, who does the rest as he turns on the Jets and flies down the field to put Muzzle Shoals up 7-0. Let's go to the final. Muzzle Shoals goes on to win 33-16. Next week, Marshall Shoals will host Austin and Hazel Green will play at Athens. All right, we're just getting started right here on First Down Friday Night. Don't forget, we're on social media at Mo Carter WZDX at Hannah WZDX. Send us a tweet. We might read it out later on the show. All right, so as we mentioned, we're just getting started. When we return, we'll tell you about a lot of other games from around the way, including a big one right over in Madison. It's Madison County against Madison Academy. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and it's time for our Spirit of the Week segment, which is brought to you by the wonderful people at Bojangles. We got the boxes this week, Hannah. You got them like pom-poms there. Exactly. <laughs> I wish I could do this, but I'm going to go ahead and just stop right here. That's why I played football and was not on the other situation. But you got to love those cheerleaders, though, too. And you also have to love the people at Bojangles. Who's our Spirit of the Week this week? It's the East Limestone Band, Mo. Oh, man, this band is really, really fun. Of course, it's the East Limestone Marching Bands under the direction of Jennifer Jansen, year in and year out. They participate in multiple showcases in both Alabama and Tennessee. And, of course, you will always hear those war chants with this band. So, Hannah, look, I know you're a Florida Gators grad, so you got to hear these Florida State war chants if you ever go to East Limestone and check out that band. Once again, congratulations to East Limestone on being our Spirit of the Week. Hannah, I'll send it over to you. It's my least favorite chant, now. All right. The Tanner Rattlers are usually at the top of 2A Region 7, but after losing three straight, they are fighting for the fourth seed in a spot in the postseason. But a win tonight won't come easy. They're facing Tarrant, the team that sits atop the region. The Wildcats have won five straight. And in the second now, they lead by 19. Tanner is trying to make something happen. Vincent Green hands the ball off to Kristen Lampkin. And he is dodging defenders to take it across the 45. But the drive would stall and the Wildcats would get the ball back. Taylor rolls out and he is going deep. And Gavante Lee is there to make the catch, but he is taken down by his Whoa. face mask and a flag comes out there, just making it that much easier for the Wildcats. A few plays later, Taylor hands it off to Jay Wandell and he takes it in for the touchdown. And the Wildcats go for two now. Taylor finds Emery Bryant in the end zone and they take a 27 point lead. And the Wildcats go on to win 65 nothing next week. Tanner will play at Cold Springs. To Woodville hosting Appalachian tonight in a non-region game. The Panthers are trying to hang on to fourth in 1A Region 6. And the first, Jasper Hutchins fakes the handoff to Devin Payne and keeps it and takes it into the end zone. And the Eagles go up 7-0. Woodville is trying to keep up. The snap is low and Jackson Peake picks it up and is scrambling, trying to make something happen. But his pass is picked off by Noah Harris. And now the Eagles are driving again. Hutchins hands it off to Payne and he gets the touchdown. And they widen their lead to 14. Let's go to the final. Appalachian goes on to win 35 to 13. Next week, Woodville will host Valley Head. All right, everyone, a scary moment happened during Madison Academy's Week Zero matchup with McCauley. At the 10:22 mark of the second quarter, Huntsville Councilman Mark Russell, who also officiates football games on the side, suffered a heart attack on that evening. Thankfully, he received immediate attention before being rushed to the hospital. Seven weeks later, Russell returns to Madison Academy tonight, and he was honored before the game by doing the coin toss. The councilman is also so thankful for wonderful people who helped save his life that night, including Paulette Berryman, who administered CPR to him. If you know who she is, there she is right there. I'm humbled by all the people that helped me that night. There were so many people that worked really hard to save me, many people that I, I didn't even know. So I'm really humbled for those good Samaritans. Um, I, I believe it's a second chance story. I've been given a second chance, and uh, I'm here to take advantage of it. Good to see the councilman back on his feet tonight. Now, what about the game? Madison Academy hosting Madison County. There he is, Councilman Russell. 
you know, doing the coin toss early on. The Mustangs defense playing well. Tigers quarterback Austin Mills sets back the pass. He's intercepted by Evan Brooks. He takes it back deep inside of Tigers territory. However, they can't capitalize because they missed the field goal, so it's still scoreless. Next Tigers possession, Mills steps back in. Guess what happens, Hannah? Interception. Exactly. He is picked off, and this time, Andy Shad is taking it back to the house for a score. Seven to nothing Mustangs and hey coach Reynolds definitely loving that from his defense turnovers plague Madison County Tay province fumbles the handoff Jalen Brackett comes up with the recovery and the Mustangs will waste no time getting on the board next their quarterback Luke Nail sitting back in the shotgun he's got all day eventually fires a Long pass down the field to Tyler Green for a touchdown. 14 to nothing Mustangs at that point. And Madison Academy goes on to beat Madison County by a final of 40 to 7. Next week, Madison County will take on Sardis, while Madison Academy, they'll take on North Jackson. Turnovers will get you there every time, though. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, here from our MVP of the week and much more. Stay with us. Let's get back to the highlights on First Down Friday Night on WZDX. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to take a break from the action to tell you about our recent First Down Friday Night MVP of the week. And this week, it goes out to a player that continues to impress us every season. And that Madison County running back, Tay Province, he sat out for four weeks with an ankle injury, but his first game back last week, he racked up 249 yards and four touchdowns. To help the Tigers take down DAR 48 to 28. The LSU commit could not be happier to be back on the field after having to watch from the sidelines for so long. It was the roughest thing I've ever had to do because, you know, I'm so used to playing. I've never really had a serious injury like this that set me back for a while. So just to get back, get back in the rotation of things, it's probably the best feeling I could ever. Tate just brings something that, that very few athletes have, and that's the ability to just to change the game like he did the other night. So we're certainly glad that he's back. Now, if you think you know of an athlete that's deserving of our first down Friday night MVP award, just send us an email. First down, MVP at RocketCityNow.com with the player's name, school, position, and the most important word of all, stats. There you go. Send it over to us, and who knows, you may help select the next first down Friday night MVP. All right, let's get back to the high school football action. When it comes to the playoffs, North Jackson and Westminster Christian are both on the outside looking in. The Wildcats are fifth in 4A Region 7, and the Chiefs are in sixth. The first drive for North Jackson was slow and steady. The Chiefs took nine minutes off the clock before Tanner Woodall scored on this short touchdown to put the Chiefs on the board. That's crazy. Then they, nine minutes? That's a lot of time. They go for two. Woodall is stopped at the one-yard line. So the score stays 6 nothing. later. It's Westminster Christian on the move. Ian Thies keeps it and takes off running. And he finds the end zone for a 40-yard score. But the Wildcats don't get the point after. So the game stays tied at 6. And Westminster goes on to win 34-18. Next week, North Jackson will host Madison Academy. And Westminster Christian will have a bye week. It was homecoming for the Huntsville Panthers tonight at Lewis Cruz Stadium. And congratulations to the newest homecoming queen for the Panthers. Now let's pick things up. Panthers leading at the half, 7 to nothing until Connor Cantrell of Mate Jemison hands it off Kendrick Bolden, and he is gone. See you later into the end zone for a touchdown. But wait a second. There's a flag on the play, holding on the offense, so they end up punting it away. Now Huntsville on fourth down. They are, well, there's the holding penalty right there. So, all right, Huntsville now with the ball on fourth down, and a punt is blocked right here and recovered by Bradley Gowen. Eventually, that would lead to a touchdown coming your way in just a moment. As a matter of fact, I'm just, I'm just predicting the future because there's the touchdown right then and there. Game tied at seven right there. Let's go to your final score, everyone. I know this one had to be a real, real tight one between Huntsville and James Clements, and Huntsville ends up pulling off the 24 to 7 victory over James Clements. It's always good to win your homecoming game. Grissom hosted Buckhorn last night at Milton Frank. The Bucks lead the all-time series 8 
to two in the first. Mel Dantzler takes the handoff right up the middle and no one can catch him. He takes it 50 yards for the touchdown, but the extra point was no good. So the Tigers lead 6-0. Later, Buckhorn gets to the red zone thanks to a fake punt. Now on third down, William Stiles throws the fade to Ken Allison, but he can't make the catch. And that brings up fourth down. So Jonathan Valdez comes out and makes this short field goal to cut Grissom's lead to three. And later, he makes another field goal to tie the game up at six. And that was the score going into halftime. And Buckhorn goes on to win 13 to eight. Next week, Buckhorn will host James Clemens and Grissom will play at Bob Jones. Let's take you down to Pell City. That's where Alberville was playing tonight. And we've got these highlights thanks to the wonderful people at Aggie Vision. Early on, Pell City was the one that got on the board first. They get into the red zone. However, they have to settle for this very short field goal that goes up. And it is good. Pell City jumps on top of the Alberville Aggies by a score of three to nothing. Later in the quarter now, Pell City on the move again. Brandon Crow looking for his man Malik Posey. He is wide open and nobody's going to catch him on the long touchdown score. That puts them up 10 to nothing at that point. Alberville trailing Pell City. Let's check out your final score as Pell City goes on to win by a final of 24 to 13. Next week, Alberville's got that big one against Fort Payne. Let's tell you about some other scores from around the way. Bob Jones goes to Gaston City and scores a 34 to 3 victory while Sparkman loses a close one to Hewitt Trustville by a final of 34 to 27. Scottsboro beats Arab tonight 27 to 7 and Etowah takes down Boaz 41 to nothing. All right, DAR. Upset over Ooh. Sardis 31 to 21. Congratulations to them on that game right there. And Wilson knocks off Deschler 10 to nothing. Rogers shuts out Priceville tonight 55 to 7 and Lauderdale County beats Elkmont 63 to 12. Some other scores to tell you about here as we take a look there and hey, we're just going to go ahead and keep rolling with first down Friday night. Ask actually West Morgan beats Clements 37 to 10 there and Colbert, Colbert Heights beats Colbert County 35 to 7. All right, thank you so much, Anna. It's time for our college segment. We'll talk about the big weekend games when we return right here on WZDX is sponsored in part by Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. It's time to switch it up and get to some college football action. That's right. We'll start off with the Auburn Tigers. Of course, they've been a on a roll since that week two loss at Clemson. Carryon Johnson has scored 11 of his nation leading 12 touchdowns during that stretch. Jared Steno's passing percentage has been off the charts. And that could be beneficial against LSU's defense, which is ranked in the middle of the SEC. Gus Malzahn's team looking for their first win in Baton Rouge since 1999. Alabama is hosting Arkansas tomorrow for its homecoming game. The Tides defense has been getting ready for two quarterbacks this week. The Razorback starter Austin Allen left last week's game with a shoulder injury. So if he's out, then Cole Kelly is in. The backup is 6'7 and 270 pounds. He has a little bit of a different skill set than Allen, making it harder for Alabama's defense to prepare when they don't know who they'll be playing against. We don't know if they'll change styles with him as a quarterback. So um, we have to prepare for some things that they could do with him. But we can't really change because we don't really know. And we'd be defending Ghost, you know, if we tried to figure it out. After losing their first swag game to Southern last week, James Spade and the Bulldogs returning home to face Mississippi Valley State. The Delta Devils claimed their first W of the year by defeating Arkansas Pine Bluff last week. This is a team that AM took down 35 to 16 last year, but head coach James Spady says he's been watching film on the Delta Devils all weekend, and hey, they're not a bad squad. The UNA Lions finally got a win over Florida Tech last week after dropping two straight GSC games, and they hope to come out on top on the road at Shorter tomorrow. Now, the Hawks have yet to win a conference game this season and are 0-6 overall, and the Lions have completely dominated the series to this point, winning all five games against Shorter. And finally, Jacksonville State trying to set a record this weekend. If, with their win over Austin P, they tied the OVC record for the longest conference win streak with a win against East Kentucky. They They'll hold that record. Head coach John Gross says they're pretty happy not to be on the road for this game. And once again, we always want to thank you for joining us right here on First Down Friday Night. Week 7 is done. We're getting ready for Week 8 next week. If you miss any part of the show, just head over to RocketCityNow.com backslash sports and you'll see you tonight. For Ann Alavita, I'm Mo Carter. Have a great weekend.